among very rare Kenyans, there is one called Geoffrey Griffin. He is very rare, as you will see from here. Geoffrey Griffin was born in the 30s in Kitale. His father was uh, a British, Kenyan born or British. While his mother was a British, yes, but Indian born British. So he was born in Kitale, went to primary school in Kitale, and secondary school he studied in Nairobi. After his secondary school, uh, the, the colonial government had this national service duties for European youths, European boys, uh, whereby after school you did a paramilitary course for two years. Geoffrey Griffin, after completing the two-year course, he joined the police as a reservist. When he joined the police as a reservist, uh, of course he came into contact with the Mau Mau. He was a colonial police officer uh, and later he joined the colonial military also uh, as a cadet officer of the rank of second lieutenant. He rose within the British Army or King's African Rifle to the rank of major. So those who know him will attest that uh, in all his writings, he used to be called Major Retired Geoffrey Griffin. As, as a police reservist and as a military officer, he was not happy with the way the British were treating the Mau Mau. But he could do nothing about it because he could be considered a sellout. Uh, later on, uh, he found some two or three chokoras, Kikuyu chokoras. After asking them, inquiring from them, he found that uh, they became chokoras because their parents had been detained because of Mau Mau. Then he went to uh, Shell, Shell BP, went to Shell BP, where he was given a uniport, two, in fact there were two. He was given two uniports uh, to accommodate these three or so youths. Uniport is a, a Mabati house which is circular, like the grass-touched house, but it, is, it has Mabati throughout. If you go to Stareboy Center today, those two uni huts are still there to commemorate where everything started. So he brought those kids up and uh, it continued expanding and expanding. I do not know how uh, Caltex came in because you know Caltex and um, Shell BP were rivals, but uh, it was due to the influence of, of Caltex that uh, he set up the uniform that is there to date, whereby the trouser is uh, blue and the shirt is red. They even call it uh, Caltex uniform. When Kenya attained independence, uh, he was very quick to pull in the political heavyweights. He brought in Tomboya, and after Tomboya died, he brought in Kibaki. The, there was suspicion about that, but uh, before I continue with how the suspicion came about of a Stare Boy Center, uh, the government decided to start National Youth Service, <clears throat> and they turned two people. Uh, they turned to Geoffrey Griffin, who, was, who had already attended a national service be, uh, earlier on. And they also turned to a politician called J.M. Karioki. 
JM Karaoke had connections with Israel, and so the initial NYS were trained on the Israel model. The only difference is, from the word go, up to the time of recording this, and it is an arm that is not armed. Although shortly before Moi, before around the time when multi-party started in 1992, Moi took some a few national service people and trained them in firearm. But uh, generally, I could say 99.9 .9, NYS has been an uh, non-armed. Uh, disciplined force. So, Geoffrey Griffin uh, used to rely, you know, Starry Boy Center, the, there was no salary. Uh, so his salary was uh, at the NYS. On a regular day, he would work for eight hours at the two. So it was a total of 16. He never got married. He had, a, he had a lady he wanted to marry in 1966, but she saw that all his attention was to the two and he had no attention to any of the of her family, so she went away. Uh, Griffin continued with that. Stareboy Center, he, Stareboy Center had three arms. There was the primary school, there was the boys high school up to form six, and then there was the technical branch. All the three principals or head teachers reported to him. And that is why uh, today's you find schools, groups of schools, there's somebody like that is called school administrator. Uh, Griffin is buried in the chapel of Stare Boy Center. One thing that Griffin hid and never told anybody was uh, when he died, there was a lot of st uh, pressure for having the school renamed Griffin Boys Center. But then they looked at the badge of the school. The badge was in a shape that in English it's called a Griffin. So that is about Geoffrey Griffin. Mzaliwa Wakitale.